Monday, June 3, 2013, in Hong Kong, Laura Poitras, a documentary filmmaker, met columnist Glenn Greenwald at a hotel. Edward Snowden greeted them in the lobby. Snowden took the two to his room and began recording everything that had happened up to that point. Can I get your cell phones, please? Right, nice to discuss. Thank you. You've been photographed before, right? In a flashback to 2004, Snowden was recruited as a candidate for the Special Forces. Despite his perseverance, he was injured when he landed on his legs during an exercise, shattering them. Snowden's legs had been fractured for weeks, according to the doctor, but he had recently suffered a more catastrophic injury. The doctor informs Snowden that if he lands on his legs again, the bones would crumble to powder, leading to his expulsion from the military. A rucksack on a 150-pound body, I'm going to authorize an administrative discharge. Snowden commenced training for a position at the Central Intelligence Agency in 2006. He enrolled in a class instructed by Corbin O'Brien. One of Snowden's initial exams required solving a problem using a sequence. Snowden was the first to finish, and O'Brien double-checked his work to identify any mistakes. To everyone's amazement, Snowden revealed that he solved the problem by deviating from the intended order in the sequence, surprising both O'Brien and the rest of the class. Snowden develops a close friendship with a professor named Hank Forrester, who seems to have a significantly greater impact on Snowden than O'Brien did. Outside of work, Snowden communicates online with a woman named Lindsay Mills. Eventually, they meet up and take a walk around the park. Lindsay takes numerous pictures of Snowden, and during this encounter, they share their first kiss. On June 4, 2013, in Hong Kong, Snowden, Poitras, and Greenwald are joined by Ewan McCaskill, an intelligence correspondent F.O.R. The Guardian. Regarding the narrative Snowden is providing, McCaskill reports to editor Janine Gibson. CIA instructor's badge. I'm on with Stuart. The Guinness here is great. Now we have the Lewis to deal with. We can start by showing a next ski score. In 2007, Snowden is stationed in Geneva, Switzerland, assigned to protect computer network security. Lindsay decides to accompany him on his journey. During his assignment, he meets with a CIA operative who guides him through the details of his mission. Snowden and Lindsay attend a reception crowded with ambassadors and other VIP visitors. Snowden's task is to locate and surveil a banker for intelligence purposes. With Lindsay's assistance, Snowden visits a financier named Marwan Alkermani. Later on, Snowden discovers from his colleague Gabriel Soule that Alkermani's name is being searched in order to gather personal information, and that the CIA is developing a tool enabling them to conduct surveillance even when cameras are inactive. Snowden and Gabriel further uncover that Alkermani's daughter is with a man who is involved with another woman and is residing unlawfully in the United States with his mother. Later, Snowden and the agent rendezvous with Alkermani at a hotel. After Alkermani learns that his daughter's fiancé and mother have been deported, he becomes deeply distressed. He starts drinking heavily, and the agent recommends that he return home. Witnessing this situation and feeling the ethical conflict within the agency, Snowden makes the decision to depart from the CIA. He confides in Lindsay, expressing his concerns about the ethical implications of his work and the immense responsibility he feels for the lives of millions of people. Snowden begins working at Dell as a supervisor on NSA computer system improvements in 2009. Lindsay joins him again when he is stationed at an airbase near Tokyo. In Tokyo, he works as a subcontractor and trains high-ranking officials on how to bolster their networks against Chinese hackers. In 2013, the journalists encounter a hurdle when Janine hesitates to publish Snowden's materials, leading to conflict between her and Greenwald. McCaskill attempts to maintain her support to ensure they can successfully complete their task. Snowden started working at Booz Allen Hamilton in 2012. Due to the company's ties to the NSA, Snowden becomes increasingly uncomfortable with the nature of the work he is involved in. 
He discovers that the government is actively engaging in surveillance of individuals through various programs, including PRISM. Disturbed by these revelations, Snowden begins collecting and compiling documents that expose evidence of the NSA's extensive spying tactics into a dossier. In a moment of opportunity when one team encounters a work disruption, Snowden seizes the chance to access the documents. Taking advantage of the distraction, he uploads the information onto his hard drive, managing to gather all the necessary data before anyone notices. Subsequently, he conceals the drive within the core of a Rubik's Cube and casually hands it over to a soldier at the gate, disguising the action as a friendly gesture to avoid arousing suspicion. Satisfied with his covert action, he walks away confidently. The Guardian releases Snowden's documents, now that his story is fully disclosed. The information swiftly spreads to news outlets worldwide, thrusting the NSA controversy into international headlines. Faced with the escalating situation, Snowden is compelled to flee the country, bidding farewell to Lindsay. His actions spark intense debate, and public opinion varies widely, with some labeling him a traitor while others hail him as a hero. The final scene unfolds in an auditorium as Snowden addresses a group of college students through a remote-controlled monitor. He expresses his desire to return to the United States for a fair trial but emphasizes that the present time isn't conducive to that. When the moderator asks about the changes in his life post-whistleblowing, the real Edward Snowden suddenly appears, revealing that despite sacrificing much, he holds no regrets as he firmly believes he did what was morally right. The audience responds with applause, and the movie concludes with Snowden smiling contentedly. According to the final text, Edward Snowden has been hiding in Moscow since 2013, and Lindsay Mills traveled there to join him.